What's going on folks? Today on the channel we are talking about Apple. We're going to do an analysis on this company. So the last couple of days have been really great for this business. They've popped off on their earnings, stock price is up. But what does that mean for us investors that are looking to potentially get into Apple? So I have it loaded up here in the stock spec software. Currently it's at $173.57. Full disclosure, I own shares of Apple. I own it at, a, at an average price of $130 a share. So I'm pretty happy right now. But for you that are looking to potentially get into Apple and if it's right time, well, we're going to figure that out in this video by figuring out what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong and find out the intrinsic value of this business. So back to the stock spec software, the software is grading this company a seven out of 10. And if you're new to the software, new to the channel, find the link to the software in the description box below. What this software does is it makes it super easy to understand the company's balance sheets and all their financial uh, information, as well as it comes with an intrinsic value calculator, which is the price analysis section here on the page, which we'll use in a second. But this financial valuation section essentially looks at the company's balance sheets over the last five years. So you can take a look at it quickly and easily. So seven out of 10 is actually a pretty decent score. They're only getting knocks in three different categories. One with the price to earnings ratio, current ratio, and their debt to equity. Why in those three categories? Well, currently the price earnings ratio is 24.27, which we want to find companies that have a price earnings ratio of 22.5 and lower. That has been in the Benjamin Graham eyes, a more fairer multiple for earnings. So you're not overpaying for that type of evaluation. Also, the current ratio sitting below 1.5 is and currently actually sitting below one isn't that great that just means that ratio looks at how many assets do they have on hand to cover liabilities a one-to-one -one ratio would mean that their assets to liabilities are equal so they nullify each other we like finding companies that have a current ratio of 1.5 and higher because let's say if you have more assets than your liabilities and you have to cover all those short-term liabilities they can cover it no problem and there's still assets left over that they can essentially li uh, liquidate to take care of any other issues that may arise so one to one ratio is really cutting it close 1.5 that's the sweet spot and above and lastly debt to equity where they're getting knocked is 596 percent this is actually really bad folks essentially what this is telling us is that apple is extremely leveraged in debt and it makes sense uh, when interest rates were incredibly low a lot of these tech companies leveraged uh, well just taking on debt to fuel their r d and it's quite evident here there's a lot of strides in technology over the last 10 years when interest rates were extremely low now interest rates are higher uh, this might be a potential problem down the down the line and i've been talking about this time and time again with uh, other tech companies we like finding companies with a debt to equity ratio of 50 percent and lower now, this just indicates to us that the company is fueling their financial leverage through debt, which we do not want, and especially when economic times are in this weird, this weird place. So those are the three things that Apple's getting knocked off on. Now, if you're fine with all these things, well, you'll love the other seven. They have high return on equity on average. Their EPS has been growing over the last five years. So if you've been a shareholder, you should love this. They've been buying back shares. So the share dilution is down. The net income is up. The free cash flow is up. And the return on invested capital is sitting at a whopping 32%. That is phenomenal. I like finding companies with a 10% or higher on the return on invested capital. This is just indicates to us that it takes less capital to grow the business, which is incredibly important, especially for a tech business such as this. And the revenue growth is up as well, sitting at 12% over the last five years. So you can say that on a performance side, Apple has done extremely well. However, on the current side, things are kind of getting a little bit shaky. I don't like this current ratio. I don't like this debt to equity. The price to earnings ratio I can live with. It's not incredibly overpriced. However, in the 12 months, it has been bumped up to 29.05, considering that the price has been on a massive increase over the last, well, I, let's say, let's say the tail end of 2022. Let's zoom in here. January 2023 starts. We close at $135 a share. Now look where we are, pretty much a $40 increase. That's going to jump that PE ratio up by a considerable amount. Something to keep in mind, folks. Let's take a quick look at the company metrics. So in the software, the company metrics takes a look at the trailing 12 months 
and compares that to the five-year averages, similar to the financial valuations, but you're currently seeing what the company's doing and then compared to what it, they've done on average. It's a great to just to cross compare. So you're getting a higher EPS compared to what has been shown on average. Return on the equity is also higher, much higher. Profit margin is higher. The revenue is sitting at 38. So those are the four main things. The, the revenue currently is at $385 billion dollars with a net income of $94 billion. Now the free cash flow on average is $80 billion. Compare that to the 12 and 12 months of $97 billion. Phenomenal, huge, huge jump there with an Altman Z score of 8.11. And if you don't know what Altman Z score, essentially it is an accounting score, which dictates whether the company is safe or not from bankruptcy. Apple and essentially, Apple is essentially safe from bankruptcy because it has a score higher than three. To summarize, 1.8 to 3 is where companies in this gray zone, it's kind of neither here nor there. It's just generally safe, but over 3 is extremely safe. And if it's below 1.8, stay away because most likely the books aren't looking too great for the company and it is at risk of being bankrupt. Something to keep in mind, along with a strong Piotrowski score of seven. We like to find companies between the scores of seven and nine, and nine is the highest score you could potentially get. And this is just a ranking of whether the return on assets and other different metrics, similar to what the financial valuations are doing on a five-year basis, a Piotrowski score does this on a, on a one-year basis. So just to give you more current information, so seven is great. Seven on financial valuations. It's pretty solid. If you're new to the channel, folks, I'm going to show you the price analysis section. Essentially what this part of the software is, is it an, it's an intrinsic value calculator that works off of different assumptions. Now, the software comes with three different assumptions you can figure out, conservative, moderate, and aggressive. By all means, you can only just, you can do one if you want. And years of evaluation, you can do up to 20 years to, to pretty much uh, discount back to and essentially what this will provide you is with information based off historic numbers of what Apple has done or any company you're researching and what I've done is put some assumptions in on a conservative metric and what I'm going to do is try to price out what we should be paying for Apple today now to give you just some, a quick rundown the last year the revenue growth was seven percent I'm doing low numbers of three four and five percent over the next 10 years so i'm really focusing in on that 10 year number so considering it is a two point almost a three trillion dollar company i can expect this revenue growth to be growing and by huge amounts going forward especially with the economic conditions that we currently are in coupled up with a profit margin similar to what we've shown over the last 10 years free cash flow margin i kind of keep that very similar maybe taking a percentage point off here and there along with a price of free cash flow of 14, 16, and 18, price earnings ratio of 14, 16, and 18 as well. Those are conservative numbers, folks. This is what I like to do to give myself the most margin of safety as possible with a desired return of 13%. Now, this is gonna factor in what we should be paying for Apple today if I want to get a 13% return with these revenue growth numbers. It's gonna crunch the numbers and take a look at this, folks. Take a look at that. It is currently, $173 average calculations comes out to be 107.97. Now you may say, Leo, what like that is extremely low. There's why would you want to wait for Apple to fall? Well, essentially, I don't want to be paying overpaying for Apple. Now you may argue with me and say, well, your revenue growth numbers are way too low potentially. And I currently, as I said early on in the video, I currently own Apple at $130 a share, mostly factoring in a 5% revenue growth. So that is taking into account a dip from the previous year going forward for the next 10 years. So it grows at a slower pace and I paid $130 for this company. Now, have I overpaid? Potentially. However, if I'm going to add to my position, I'm only going to add once it gets to 100, around $130 again, or if it goes lower than that. Maybe I'm being way too conservative on the lower side here, sitting at $85. However, if it does fall between this range, you're definitely getting this company for a steal. If for God's sakes, it's Apple for crying out loud. Like Warren Buffett owns 40% of this in his portfolio. So for those that are looking to get into Apple, what is the motive right now? My personal opinion 
is this. I think there's a little bit, a lot of positive uh, reaction to the earnings driving the stock price up by like huge amounts. Now, do I think it's going to come back down? Uh, potentially. I think if you buy, bought Apple right now, you are essentially going to be shooting yourself in the foot because it, it's slightly over. It's a very much overvalued at this metric right now. I would wait until it starts creeping down into the 140 range personally and go from there. If you don't agree with my numbers here, ultimately my numbers are potentially extremely conservative because I want to give myself the most margin of safety because if I know they buy at this price here, if I buy at this price here and they beat my revenue growth numbers, I know I've factored that in in a sense where they've beaten my expectations and it's only going to work in my benefit. But that's the video, folks. If you found this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe button. For more analysis videos, follow the channel, put that notification bell on. I try to make videos three times a week. I've just been extremely busy, but I will try to get a video out every single week for you, no matter what. Anyways, folks, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Apple, currently not a buy just yet, but patience is the key.